Well, good morning. It is Wednesday, and uh, we're here for our morning devotion. Glad to have you along. Hope everything's going well for you today. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful day out there, sun shining and stuff. Although for you know, spray, I like to be maybe a little bit warmer, right? But uh, you know, the Lord gives us what He gives us, and He has a purpose in everything. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the story of David and Goliath. Uh, going to be looking at First uh, Samuel. Uh, let's see what have I got. First Samuel 17. Excuse me for a second there while I make a little minor adjustment here. Uh, but yeah, First Samuel 17, especially verses 45 through 46a. Uh, and that 46A simply means to get to the first uh, punctuation mark uh, of, the, of the reading. But uh, we're going to be looking at uh, David and, and what's going on here, and of course the battle with Goliath. And, you know, we have our own Goliaths in our, in our own life too, don't we? We have uh, a lot of things that go on. So I'm going to make a little transition here as I welcome you in and just want to say thank you for joining us today. It is always wonderful to have you here. And so we're going to uh, do this right here. And we have this really wonderful, wonderful, uh, beautiful screen here, right? Uh, a nice waterfall. And I thought that'd be a good setting as we talk about the battle of Goliath uh, and David, right? But David comes out victorious, and there's a reason for it, right? He trusted in the Lord. And again, it's always going to bring us back to us. What are we doing? How are we handling things in light of um, that relationship that we have with God, right? You know, when we think about uh, David going out there, if we take it just in the context of he just shows up one day and he says, hey, what's going on here, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to trust in the Lord, uh, that wouldn't give us a full picture, and it would be unfair to us so often in our life when we think about um, those battles that we have and face presently right now, right? whatever they are. Are they health? Are they job? Are they relation, you know, relationships? Uh, just so many things that, that can actually take place, right? And so as we think about David, remember, he was a shepherd boy. And even the account of this, as he's talking uh, along the way and, and giving us his, his view of it, he says, just as the Lord delivered me from the paw of the bear and the lion, right? Remember that. He had had a lot of experience with God protecting him in the wilderness while he was doing his work. And, and his work was simply watching over sheep. And let's be honest, sheep aren't exactly high-end uh, market value, right? They, I mean, they were, it was the lowest of jobs to have to be a shepherd. And that's what David was doing. But he saw how God worked in his life, whatever that job was, right? He trusted the Lord to bring him through those very difficult circumstances. Now, as, as daunting as it would be to have Goliath in front of you, uh, think how much more daunting it would have been to have a bear or a lion coming after the sheep and they're hungry and they're ready to eat and they will do whatever they can to make sure they have a meal to eat, even if it's David. And David doesn't let that uh, stop him at all. He gets his sling. Uh, he said he tracked them down. If they took a sheep, he'd go and get them. He wouldn't let them be rewarded for, for their efforts. And so when he comes into this battle with David, it's not a one-off. It's not like this is the first time and he's speaking from some unknown experiences. No, we know where his confidence comes from, and it's how the Lord had delivered him in the past. I'm putting that into perspective for you and for me. What are some of those things in your life earlier on that uh, would just shook you right to the core? And, and now today, it's almost like water off a duck's back. You, you've been through it. You know the Lord will bring you through those circumstances, and he will deliver you. I mean, think about that for a second. Right? And, and, and that's where we find ourselves so often. When we get into that next battle, sometimes we don't think about that. We don't think about how God has delivered us. We don't think about the great things he's done for us in the past. We just look at the most current Goliath that's going on. And if you go back and read through 1 Samuel 17, and I certainly encourage you to do that, he thinks so little of Goliath that in the entire conversation, only twice, but... I, I think the number is like seven or eight times that he references the Lord and what the Lord is going to do for him, not what David is doing, but what David is going to do because of the Lord and the Lord working through him and giving him the victory. And he proclaims that victory right out of the gate. He knows that he will be successful. Now, we want to make sure that we don't get into this idea that we name it, we claim it, and all this other stuff, that somehow God is going to give us every desire of our heart. I mean, that's nonsense, right? 
But, but in, in those battles, battles right, right, that the Lord calls us to fight. And, and again, again, notice what this is. is. This, this isn't David's reputation. reputation. This, this isn't David doing something or somebody doing something to David. David. This, this is the Philistine, right, coming and, and profaning the name of God, God the great and glorious God. God. And, and he's, he's doing, doing it over and over and over again. And David's like, hey, isn't anybody going to shut this guy up? I mean, he's defaming our God. And again... I don't, I don't know, know what, what all the other people had in their lives as far as their walk with the Lord. Lord. Must not have been as strong as the, the, the walk that David had, though, right? I mean, think about that. I mean, David was out in the wilderness, and he was alone by himself so many times. And think of the conversations he was probably having. He wasn't thinking about this, that, or the other. His focus was on God. Where's our focus so often? In the, in the battles of life, when we feel alone, are we focused on our loneliness or do we take time in that loneliness to reach out to God, to, to talk with him, to, to be um, blessed by him as we meditate on his word day and night? I mean, those are the things that King David gives to us, right? And, and as he does that, he, he gives us a very wonderful blessing and a very good uh, guide to follow. He gives us a great blessing in how he related to the Lord. And so maybe you and I, as we look at our lives, right, are we a great blessing to those around us and how we relate to the Lord? Do we, in our brokenness, come to the Lord and seek his help, his grace, his mercy, his guidance? Or are we more, fo more focused, again, on the problem? Are we focused on that Goliath that's in our life? And again, we think about that, right? Trust in the Lord. And even if this is a new Goliath, and it's a different Goliath, certainly it was for, for David, right? He had done bear, and he had done uh, lion, and he'd probably done a lot of other kind of animals out there. But this was the first human to stand in front of him that was about nine feet, nine inches tall, was dressed for battle, was a great warrior. And here's little David, right? I mean, maybe five, six, maybe. I don't know how tall he was, but he certainly wasn't anywhere near seven feet even, right? He was a very small person, maybe almost close to half the size of, David, or of Goliath. But in this, he says, hey, the same God who delivered me from the lion and the bear, the same one that's going to deliver me from this new Goliath that, that stands in front of me. And I think you and I can do that too, can't we? We can take the time to reflect back and, and remember how God delivered us through a lot of those circumstances. You know, if you keep a prayer journal and you go back through and, and you look at how God answered your prayers, right? And when you've come up against that new Goliath, that different Goliath, that bigger Goliath, maybe that one that might mean the end of our life here on earth, we can go back and we can reflect on God's faithfulness. And even if we don't have a prayer journal, we can certainly go through the scriptures and we can see the faithfulness of God over and over and over again starting way back in Genesis 3.15, right? Even after Adam and Eve had blown it big time and sin entered into the world and God's perfect creation was destroyed and death had come to the world, even there, the faithfulness of God should not be overlooked. I mean, there they are. They've just been held account, and all they can do is blame God or blame Satan. It's, it's, no, it's somebody else's fault. It's not mine. And, and, and you might expect that God would just be done with it then, but he speaks the beautiful, beautiful words of the gospel message. He shares that wonderful message that he is going to send a Savior. And even though countless times man has blown it over and over again, it doesn't deter our God. He is faithful to himself. He is faithful to his promises. And he will be faithful to you all the days of your life. There's nothing, nothing that's going to happen in your life that God's not aware of. There's no Goliath that's going to come into your life that's going to just somehow magically appear that's going to catch God off guard. I mean, that's, that's where we have such a wonderful blessing. Our God is ever-present, ever-aware. He lives in our now, and he's way ahead of us in our future. And he knows everything that's going to go on and, and that's going to transpire. And here again, the fact that David had that strong relationship didn't mean a smooth-sailing life. 
it meant that God would be with him and deliver him in the midst of that fear. And, and David had options. <clears throat> he could have looked at that guy and said, hey, I'm out of here. The entire army won't even engage with this guy, and I'm supposed to somehow... No, he could have done that, but he chose the other way. He chose the, the, the path that put his trust in the Lord. He wasn't coming in his name. The Lord will deliver you into my hands. The battle belongs to the Lord. You know, as you go into these circumstances, keep that in mind. Tell yourself, this battle belongs to the Lord. This battle, the Lord will bring me through it. And we always want to keep in mind the compassion that God has for us. In 2 Kings, we have the story, uh, 2 Kings 6, where Elisha and his helper are out in the wilderness and, and, and they're surrounded by the enemy. And, and the helper gets a little bit anxious, right? Like, what are we going to do? I mean, come on, right? We're surrounded. And, and then Elisha says, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And all the way around those who surrounded them was the army of the Lord. Chariots of fire, horses ready to go. And that is <clears throat> what you and I have surrounding us all the time. We can't see it. But God has his angels around us, and he is with us, and he is for us. And one of these days, one of those Goliaths may be the exact way in which God calls us from this life. But that's okay, too. Because, you see, the greatest Goliath was taken on by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that was sin and Satan and the world and our brokenness and all of our sin. And he took it and he faced Satan down. And we know that for a moment it looked like Satan had won the victory. But not to be, right? That glorious, glorious Easter resurrection, right? As Jesus comes back to life, having conquered Satan, having conquered sin and the devil and everything that separates us from God. And we rejoice in that. You see, our greatest battle is already won. In this life, we go through a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. We go through a lot of skirmishes with the devil, but Satan has already lost doesn't stop him from throwing some really hard body blows to us and bringing a lot of pain and suffering into our life. And God allows it, and we don't know all the whys and the wherefores about why that is, but what we do know is that our God is good and gracious and kind. And he loves us beyond our wildest dreams. Whatever your Goliath is, whatever's going on in your life, even in this moment, or may happen down the road, or even the hurts and the pains from the past that you're still carrying a, a deep reminder of. Give it over to the Lord. The battle is his. The battle, the victory, is ours because of Jesus, because he took on the greatest enemy, the enemy of death, and he defeated him soundly. You and I can rejoice in that love and in that mercy. Whatever Goliath may come our way, our God is greater and he is stronger and he is wiser. And in all of this, we give thanks to the Lord that he loves us so, so very much. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. I didn't really get a chance to stop and look at the names, but uh, uh, everybody that's here, um, I can see a few. I can see Toddy and David. I'm going to guess that you're both there. And Renee, good to see you. And uh, Sharon, good to have you, and say hi to Bruce for us if you would as well. And and uh, who else do we have? Uh, we got a lot of people here right today. So well, thank you so much, Diane. Thank you for joining us, and Colleen, and and so many other people. Really appreciate you joining us for today. I pray that God's peace will be with you, and that you'll have a glorious day in the Lord. And remember, there is no Goliath that is stronger than our God, and because of that, we have the victory. God's name be praised forever and ever through Christ our Lord. Have a great and wonderful day. We'll talk with you later.